The West Virginia Mountaineers are coming to DKR for the second game of conference play. How is West Virginia performing on both sides of the ball? Who are their star players? And most importantly, can Texas turn it around after a poor outing last week? After the show, make sure to head over to Inside Texas to stay in the know on your favorite football team. Practice reports, recruiting updates, and pre- and post-game analysis are being dropped constantly. You don't want to miss any of it. Subscribe to InsideTexas.com today. Link in the description. Can this Texas team finish with a sound win on Saturday? Or will we continue the disappointing trend of second half collapses when West Virginia comes to town? Without further ado, let's get into it. West Virginia, like Texas, is coming off a disappointing 2021 campaign. Head coach Neil Brown is in year four, and he has yet to win more than six games in a season. Brown needs to pull off some wins this season, or it could be his last. But he did make some smart changes to try and right the ship. First, he brought in offensive coordinator Graham Harrell out of USC, and he runs some air raid principles in their passing attack, using quick understuff and space to set up the intermediate and deep shots. But it's not the true air raid in its overarching philosophy of rarely running. They have a healthy run-to-pass mix, averaging 37 passes to 39 runs per game. They do utilize the quicker tempo, though, averaging 77 plays per game for 22nd in the nation. So they are getting to the line quickly and trying to wear out defenses over time. Brown and Harrell were able to land a good transfer quarterback and former five-star JT Daniels, and he's got awesome arm talent. There's velocity over distance, he can throw the fade ball with arc, and he can make layered throws with touch over the second level and in front of the third level. There's no question if his arm is legit, it is, but he's yet to put it all together ranked as the fifth overall quarterback in the Big 12. And there's some factors that can affect his game. He's second to last in the Big 12 in completion percentage under pressure at just 42%. When kept clean, he completes at 71%, and six of his seven touchdowns are from a clean pocket. If you give him time to find his guy, he will make the right read and complete. If you pressure him, you can force incompletions. He can get into rhythm getting the ball out quickly, with 59% of his passes coming out in under 2.5 seconds. 56% of his passes are under 9 yards or behind the line. It can dice up the defense underneath, forcing them to come down. And once that's established, Daniels can start working in his longer throws. Daniels leads the league on intermediate attempt percentage, throwing 28% of his passes between 10 and 19 yards. But he's not super effective there, ranking 7th of 9 QBs at that range. He improves on his deep stuff, though, graded as the 4th best deep passing quarterback and completing 44%. And though not a runner, he is pocket mobile, able to avoid the rush with a lower pressure to sack rate of 15%, but he's not the type to just take off with only two scrambles on the year. He's looking to sidestep the pass rush and make the throw. While his numbers are currently middle of the road, he's still a very dangerous quarterback that should continue to improve as the West Virginia offense gets more in sync. The West Virginia offensive line does a decent job protecting Daniels, ranking fourth in offensive line pass blocking efficiency and only giving up five sacks on Daniels through four games. But they can still be pushed back enough to limit Daniels as they are tied for third with overall pressures at 27. So while rushers don't often get home for concrete stats like a sack, they can still speed up that throwing clock. It's not a major issue when Daniels is usually getting the ball out quickly anyways, but when he is looking for that deeper shot, it can affect his accuracy. They have two top pass-blocking offensive linemen in the 9th-ranked Wyatt Milam at left tackle and the 12th-ranked Zach Frazier at center. When the O-line is clicking and Daniels is in rhythm, they have some good weapons to throw to. West Virginia has one of the better wide receiving core in the Big 12 with all three of their starters ranking in the top 20. And they have a very clear number one, number two, and number three receiver. The first receiver in targets with 45 is redshirt junior Bryce Ford Wheaton. He's an awesome boundary receiver ranking third in the Big 12 with 319 yards, 27 catches, and four touchdowns. West Virginia leans on him as the second most targeted receiver in the entire league. His 6'3", 225-pound frame allows for some versatility. He's a complete receiver, able to beat you at any depth. He can moss you on the deep contested catch, move the chains on a short slant, or take a screen behind the line for 50 yards. You won't be able to shut him down, but your goal is to limit his production. Then you have another real threat on the opposite side of the field in receiver Caden Prather. 
The sophomore ranks fifth in targets with 29, catching 20 of those for a 69% reception rate. He's a big 6'4", 210-pound outside receiver averaging 11 yards per catch. And he's fast for his size and can get behind the defense. But a majority of his targets actually come from 9 yards or less. He already has 220 yards for 6th best in the Big 12. Prather currently ranks 12th overall. Then you have their number three receiver in slot, Sam James. The redshirt junior has been targeted 19 times, catching 13 of those for 219 yards and two touchdowns. He gets the bulk of his catches in that intermediate range, with 36% of his targets coming from 10 to 19 yards. You want to watch out for him on those long crossers over the middle. So we can see they have some options in the passing offense, but they are also well-rounded aiming to run about half the time, and they're effective there as well. West Virginia has a good run-blocking offensive line, ranking 22nd overall of 130 teams and 3rd in the Big 12. On the line, West Virginia left tackle Wyatt Milam is ranked 9th, right guard Doug Nestor is ranked 10th, and center Zach Frazier is ranked 22nd. But the original right guard is coming back off injury, so it could put Doug Nestor back at his original right tackle spot. Their number one back in attempts by a small margin is Tony Mathis Jr., He's shifty, able to make quick moves, but he hasn't been effective so far, averaging 4.8 yards per attempt on 57 carries. Overall, he ranks 14th out of 21 Big 12 running backs. But West Virginia's second back in attempts, C.J. Donaldson, is a far better performer. He's currently ranked as the third back in the Big 12, putting up an impressive 7.3 yards per carry. He's a big dude at 6'2", 240 pounds, and he runs downhill with a lot of power. Due to that mix of speed and power, he's hard to bring down, leading the Big 12 in yards after contact per attempt at 5.6 yards. Donaldson also has sure hands, catching six of his seven targets. You definitely have to respect their rushing ability between good run blocking and two backs with two different running styles. They can change up the pace when need be. Overall, the West Virginia offense is a solid group. They're just struggling to put all those pieces together in a cohesive package, having some struggles early into the season. While already dangerous, I expect them to only improve as the season wears on. The keys for the Texas defense are crucial after the poor showing at Tech. Luckily, Daniels isn't a running quarterback, so you don't have to worry about contain as much. But Tech's offensive line ranks 9th out of 10 Big 12 teams, and we weren't successful in shutting down Smith. West Virginia's pass blocking is better, and JT Daniels is a more seasoned quarterback who can get rolling when kept clean. Without tangible pressure, Daniels will have all the time in the world to make his plays. Find a way to generate pressure that results in concrete stats consistently and do it fast. The secondary is the biggest point of concern in this matchup. West Virginia likes to pass with three productive receivers and an effective quarterback in JT Daniels. I'm afraid the blueprint of dinking and dunking our secondary down the field has been noticed beginning with Alabama, then exploited by UTSA, and finally exposed by Texas Tech. I expect to see more short passing at the sticks. Once that puts you in manageable downs and distances, throw it deep. Our corners are struggling to make clean plays with the ball in the air, and West Virginia will certainly look to test that. Our run defense, minus quarterback runs, has been solid through four games, ranking third in the Big 12. West Virginia is a good run blocking team with a top back in C.J. Donaldson. I'm interested to see if our run defense holds up against a team that does put an emphasis on the run. Tech is the worst run blocking team in the Big 12 that schematically doesn't value running, so it wasn't a big challenge to shut down their backs. This should be a tougher test. I know West Virginia had a tough start to the season, but like Texas, their offense is better than it has performed. If West Virginia is able to start gelling, there's a chance of them being able to put up a lot of points if we don't buckle down on defense. Can't shoot ourselves in the foot on those third and longs either. Now, let's check out the other side of the ball. But before we hit the defense, you need to check out Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a US based daily fantasy sports app where you can make college football player projections all season long. How does it work? You select two to five players and choose more or less on their projections. It could be passing yards, rushing yards, receiving yards, and more. And if those players score more or less than their prize pick projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. Just hop on the prize picks app or website, go to the college football tab, and check out the player projections. It's a smooth process where you can make your entries in 60 seconds or less with fast withdrawals. It's that easy. As a first time depositor, use promo code TexasHomer. 
and you will receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. That's double your money up to $100 for your first time. So sign up for prize picks, use promo code TexasHomer at sign up and add even more excitement to your game day. Link in the description. The West Virginia defensive scheme is a 3-3-5 in its base. Three down defensive linemen, three linebacker types, and five defensive backs. But one of the linebackers is more of a hybrid. They call that position the bandit, able to come down onto the line as well as playing space off the ball. This allows the scheme to morph between a 3-3-5 and a 4-2-5 depending on the situation. They do a good job of switching that up often, so opposing offenses have to deal with different looks. While the scheme is flexible, the West Virginia defense still has been underperforming this season, ranking 84th in the nation overall and last in the Big 12. They are currently giving up 28 points per game, tied for 85th in the nation. Run stopping is the strongest aspect of the defense currently, ranking 43rd in EPA allowed on defense with only 35% of runs being successful for third in the Big 12. Personnel-wise, they don't have a single top 25 run stopper on the defensive interior, but their edge guys are far better. And since their scheme is flexible, a defensive tackle can switch to an end and an edge can switch to defensive tackle depending on the situation. They do this often with their best defensive lineman and Dante Stills. Dante Stills is the second best run stopper in the league. Second string end Taj Alston is fourth and first string end Sean Martin is seventh out of 28 players. Their hybridized outside linebacker edge role, the Bandit, doesn't have a great run presence. Linnell Carr is the 17th ranked run stopper at the position, and Jared Bartlett is 26th. They are more utilized in passing situations. At linebacker, starting Mike Lee Koba is 15th, and starting Will x Lowe is 28th out of 29 total run stopping off-ball linebackers. In the secondary, their best graded run stopper is free safety Aubrey Burks at 10th. So overall, the defensive line is the teeth of the run-stopping unit, and particularly the guys that are flexible to move from defensive tackle to end depending on the situation. The pass rush is middle of the road in production. On the defensive line, their most productive pass rusher is Dante Stills, ranked 22nd, with seven total pressures, three of which are sacks. Second string end Taj Alston is 26th, with six pressures and one sack. And first string end Sean Martin is 29th, with five pressures and one sack. That hybridized bandit position can generate some pass rush with Jared Bartlett landing two sacks and two hurries and Linnell Carr generating six hurries. There aren't any pass rushers at off-ball linebacker in the top half and the secondary has no defenders that even qualify for the minimum attempts because they are so rarely sent. Lacking consistent pass rush, of course, puts added pressure on your secondary, and the West Virginia secondary is the weakest aspect of their team currently. Opposing defenses are successful on 42% of their passes, ranking 8th out of 10 Big 12 teams. In a non-advanced stat, passing yards per game, they are averaging 240 yards for 70th out of 130 teams. If you group all safeties and corners together in coverage, the only starter in the top 25 is strong safety Marcus Floyd at 25th. Right corner Wesley McCormick is 27th. Free safety Aubrey Burks is 40th. At Spear, which is a hybridized nickel position, Lance Dixon is 57th. In the left corner position, Rashad Ajay is 71st out of 71 total coverage defenders. The keys for the Texas offense are more about our ability to get out of our own way. Our wounds are often self-inflicted, so let me go through some global issues the offense is experiencing. Sarkeesian is an effective game planner, having great success on his opening scripts, but for whatever reason, he gets less creative in the second half. And this is not a new observation, as it was a consistent theme last year as well. There's a stubbornness to the play calling late in the game. For example, we are a bad inside running team due to our inability on the interior to run block, and we have displayed that in every game this season. Yet we run our heads into a brick wall over and over trying to run up the middle on early downs. Adjustments should be made. Sarkeesian runs a slow offense, averaging 63 plays per game, ranking 112th out of 130 teams. This strategy works fine when you are able to execute your offense consistently, but when you are getting little yards on first downs due to bad run calls, which compounds to third and long, then you're in trouble. On top of that, we struggled to convert those third downs. Texas is 87th in the nation for third down conversions, getting them only one out of three times. This play style with lack of execution is a recipe for a stalling offense late in games. With less plays being ran, the opposing defense can remain fresh throughout the entire game, making it exceedingly tougher for our offense to get an edge. 
As a coach, it's not about what you want to do. It's about what you have to do. Flexibility is key. We need flexibility in run calls, in the row cap package, and in the passing game. I'd like to see some more short, quick passing concepts, particularly on early downs that quarterbacks can easily identify pre-snap for easy five-yard gains. Jordan Whittington and Jatavion Sanders would be effective in that situation. For West Virginia specifically, attempt to run inside since their interior and linebackers are not great run stoppers. But if it doesn't work, test their edges horizontally on outside zone. If that doesn't work, make short passes and extension of your run game and bypass the line of scrimmage altogether. Our pass blocking has been effective up until the Tech game, so continue taking shots. But if we're still struggling, then utilize those quicker passing concepts. It's not a sin to dink and dunk. We see teams do it to us all the time, whatever is needed to move the chains. The West Virginia coverage is prone to mistakes, and I have no doubt Sark can scheme guys wide open. We just have to hit those throws at crucial points later in the game. Wide receivers need to come down with contested catches. I want to see more grit out of the receivers to adjust the route, fight back to the ball, and make the tough catch. It's easy for the average fan to overlook West Virginia due to their early performance, but they absolutely have weapons, and teams always find a way to gel against the Longhorns. Come in there prepared and put the game away if the opportunity arises, because we can't afford to go 0-2 in conference play. Thanks for hanging out. Watch some more of my videos here. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you want to support Quality Texas content. As always, welcome.